Less than 24 hours after the president delivers an ultimatum to the new Congress, we have a response from the newly powerful Republican Party. And it clearly is not what the president wanted to hear. Good evening and welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megyn Kelly. Tonight, the ball is back in the president's court after 72 hours of major political drama in the nation's capital. First, the Republicans racked up breathtaking wins in Tuesday night's midterms. Then President Obama responded in a lengthy news conference that started with an olive branch to the GOP, but was quickly overshadowed by a new demand, with the president saying Congress has about seven weeks to pass a comprehensive immigration bill he likes, or he will act on his own. House Speaker John Boehner today responded by saying the president is playing with fire. Now, finding common grounds can be hard work, uh, but it'll be even harder if the president isn't willing to work with us. Yesterday, we heard him say that he may double down on his go-it-alone approach. Listen, I've told the president uh, before, he needs to put politics aside and rebuild trust. And rebuilding trust not only with the American people, uh, but with the American people's representatives here in the United States Congress. I believe that if the president continues to act on his own, he is going to poison the will. When you play with matches, uh, you take the risk of burning yourself. And he's going to burn himself uh, if he continues to go down this path. The American people made a clear election day. They want to get things done, uh, and they don't want the president acting on a unilateral basis. Over in the Senate, six Republican senators reacted as well, sending outgoing Majority Leader Harry Reid a blistering letter urging him to block executive action from the president that amounts to, quote, amnesty. Going on, to say, going on to say, quote, President Obama will be exercising powers properly belonging to Congress if he makes good on his threat, and that any executive actions resembling amnesty will create a constitutional crisis that demands action by Congress to restore the separation of powers. Moments ago, I spoke with Senator Jeff Sessions, who co-wrote that letter. He was re-elected on Tuesday after running unopposed to what will be his fourth term. Senator, good to see you tonight. And so congratulations Thank on your victory. You, not, not exactly unexpected since nobody opposed you, but none, nonetheless, congrats. And so my question Thank to you, you is, you say in this letter to the president on, on his threatened executive action that you will use all procedural means necessary, you say to Harry Reid, uh, to resolve this constitutional crisis the president would create. What does that mean exactly? We have got to make sure that Congress speaks on this issue. The House has already passed legislation that would bar the president from expending any money uh, to carry out such an amnesty as this, uh, this executive amnesty that 80 percent of the American people in, in polls show oppose. Yet he's continuing to talk about it. It violates the constitutional structure and law, and it needs to be stopped, and we've got to stand up and do so. And Senator Reid needs to do it as an institutional person to defend the integrity of Congress, who has the sole power to pass laws on immigration, and the president's duty is to enforce those laws. All right. Now, it's not clear whether if we jump to January and you try to pass such a thing once the GOP actually has control of the Senate, uh, whether you could you could get such a bill passed in the Senate, even under Republican control, because 14 senators voted for a comprehensive immigration bill that the Democrats wanted to put through. So the GOP in the Senate is not uniform on this issue. However, you're going to head up the budget committee, correct? And so what powers will well, you have Lord to will. shut it down? Well, look, the, the people who supported the Gang of Eight bill, uh, Senator McCain and others, have condemned roundly the president's executive amnesty proposal. He said it cannot, you know, he pleaded with the president not to do it and others um, that have, uh, have said the same thing. So we're in a position, first, I believe, that we should and funding the government uh, through when the House sends their bill over to appropriate money to carry on the government for uh, a continuing resolution, that it should bar the, any expenditure of money to carry out such a, an executive amnesty. Can, can I jump in and just ask you about that? Because my, here's my question. How would that work? Because what the White House won't say what it's going to do. I mean, in your defense, he's just saying, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something if you don't do something. <laughs> and but the, they're suggesting that this might be an expansion. He deferred prosecution of children who were brought here by their parents illegally. And the suggestion is he might then expand that to defer prosecution of all those children's parents 
or perhaps beyond that. But they're talking any place between one and five million illegal immigrants who might be uh, affected, who might have their prosecutions deferred. How do you shut down funding for a deferred prosecution? Well, it's real easy. Uh, at least the way they did this DACA thing, they gave those individuals ID cards with the words work authorization on it and, and gave them the, the, uh, the a power to take a job, which is uh, improper and contrary to what the, the laws of the United States uh, are. And so now the president is saying he's going to do up to five to six million more. And so Congress simply has to bar the expenditure of any money to carry out such a scheme because it will be a very expensive scheme. Mm -hmm. And we do that all the time. We, for example, Guantanamo would have been closed a long time ago, except Congress barred the president from spending any money to close Guantanamo. That's what he wanted to do. It Hundreds, thousands of p legislative actions throughout the years have barred the executive branch from spending money to execute policies that Congress does not want to fund. Now, is that so that's all you'd be willing to do? For us to do? Is that it? And because we can do that. We've had uh, the, the budgetary measures are not as controversial as some of the other things that people. People are suggesting such as possible impeachment of the president for what many would consider lawless actions if he goes too far. The president does have prosecutorial discretion when it comes to immigration. The Supreme Court made that clear as recently as 2012. But if he gets to the point where it looks like he's broadly ignoring laws that have been passed and signed into law by a president, then it could be an abuse of power. So he's going to have to be very careful about how far he goes. Some have suggested if he goes too far, he should be impeached. Charles Krauthammer is on the Fox News Channel saying yesterday to Republicans, if he does that, don't take the bait. Would you? No, I think we, we've, we've got plenty of tools and we need to use every one of those tools. Look, the American people have pleaded with Congress and presidents for 30 years. They've asked, pleaded, and, and demanded, really, a lawful system of immigration that serves the national interest. President Obama is decimating law enforcement, Megan, in a host of ways. This is just one of them. He's, he's destroying the law enforcement. The morale of our immigration officers are the lowest of any agency in the government. They sued the uh, 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 Secretary of Homeland Security for causing them to violate their oath uh, and not enforce the laws of the country. It's an unbelievable circumstance. Is the president is arrogantly uh, refusing to follow the will of the American people first and foremost and to fulfill his duty to faithfully see that the laws of the United States are executed. Is there anything, really and, it, and it should be noted, it should be noted that if he, if he, if he issues an executive action that is not to the liking of the country, he could be I mean, he could be replaced by a Republican who would undo what he did. And an executive action doesn't have the full force of law behind it. And so it could be undone by another president. But I want to ask you this. Is there any chance that what he's demanding be done will, in fact, get done, which is the House and the Senate, which is now controlled by Democrats for until, you know, the end of the year. And that's when he wants it. He wants it by January. We'll work together to come up with a comprehensive immigration reform bill because they did that before. It did pass the Senate. You didn't sign on. And the House said mm, no. So what do you think now? Well, we need to improve the laws of the United States, and we need to create a principled uh, immigration system that serves the interests of the American people, that does not pull down wages, that does not deny Americans jobs that they'd otherwise be able to take. We absolutely need to do that. And I would say the American people are overwhelmingly in favor of that. So I would warn my Democratic colleagues, look to what happened to some of your colleagues in this past election. Uh, you need to understand the American people want something done. And if you stand in the way of it and you filibuster and block well, what are you talking about specifically? The Democrats were behind the last bill. It was the Republicans in the House and, and some in the Senate, like yourself, who said this bill isn't good enough. And that was a bill that um, would have provided for more security, would have provided a border fence, would have provided uh, more money for uh, enforcement along the border and would have eventually provided a path for citizenship. Well, it would double the number of workers coming into the country to take jobs. It would have gone from 10 million people getting permanent legal status in America over the next 10 years to 30 and would not be an effective enforcement tool as we demonstrated. And that's why the House said it was dead on arrival when it arrived over there. 
It did not do the job. Mm -hmm. The talking points they put out were good and sounded wonderful. But when you read the bill, it did not do what they promised. So we've got to write a bill that will work. Uh, yes, we can do that. But biggest part of the problem is they won't enforce the laws that are on the books. They won't do the job now. We've got a lot of laws that simply are not being enforced, encouraging more and more people to come unlawfully, making it uh, uh, really putting extreme pressure on the working Americans whose wages are down and whose employment prospects are down. Senator Jeff Sessions, thank you for being here, sir. All the best to you.